They've demonstrated that they're willing to compromise. And now it's on Hamas. Well, let's uh, bring in uh, our correspondent, Saeed Shahata from uh, BBC Arabic. Uh, Saeed, what do you think is the likelihood of this ceasefire proposal becoming a reality? Uh, indicators lead us to think it's unlikely to happen uh, because Hamas was supposed to give a, respo a reply on Monday after a delegation from Hamas visited uh, Cairo, but then they got a revised proposal from Israel through Egypt and Qatar and the United States. So they are going to give a response uh, today. Uh, but the indicator saying they are not going to agree on it uh, because Hamas uh, requests or conditions are full withdrawal of Israeli army from uh, Gaza, uh, permanent ceasefire, uh, and uh, the, ref the refugees or the displaced people going from the uh, south to the north to their houses. Israel accepted part of it, but they didn't agree with a permanent ceasefire. But uh, uh, what's called a sustainable period of calm, which is in Hamas opinion is not like up to the uh, uh, ceasefire, permanent ceasefire. In addition to that, you know, like uh, Mr. Netanyahu insisting that the Rafah invasion will happen regardless a truce negotiations. So all of that lead us to think Hamas will not agree on it because the pressure more on Israel more than Hamas. And of course, on the one hand, you have Israel reportedly trying to make it sound as if this ceasefire could be permanent. On the other hand, you've got the Israeli leader, Benjamin Netanyahu, saying Rafa will be attacked no matter, no matter what to contra contrary positions there. And this will, will, will strengthen the theory of Hamas will not accepting the deal because and on the one hand, they're saying they, they're happy to do a negotiation deal to reach a deal in order to release hostages a return for some like return of some displaced people. But at the same time, invading Rafah would be disastrous in the opinion of the Palestinian and in the opinion of the international community. As the Secretary, Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, said, if the invasion happens, it will be unbearable escalation. And they're asking all the sides, the countries who have like influence on Israel to convince them not to do the invasion because it's affecting the more than one million people displaced in, in Rafah. So Anthony Blinken now landing uh, in Tel, Tel Aviv. Of course, US-Israel relations have been strained for some time. How would you describe them now? Did the Iranian strikes change anything, bring them closer together again? You know, the relationship between Israel and America is very strong. There is some like problems happen between them, but at the same time, it's very strong, uh, solid relationship. The Iranian attack helped the case of Mr. Netanyahu. But if he's going to invade Rafah, it will affect negatively that because uh, the meeting between Mr. Blinken and the King of, jo uh, King of uh, Jordan, uh, the King of Abdullah, is insisting about the peace process, two-state solution and all of that. But the invasion of Rafah will destroy that, will make that not visible in the near future. Okay. Saeed Shahada from BBC Arabic, thank you very much for